Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's Gabe with another Fan TV. Back at another video. And I'm talking about the 10 most expensive signings in Ravens history since 2012. So, pretty much uh, that Super Bowl year and beyond, right? What, what have the Ravens done in frequency? Uh, before we get into that, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Um, you guys been killing. Let's keep running it up. Thank you guys so much. Um, okay, so let's get into the video. Now, I didn't drop a video yesterday because uh, with everything that happened on Wednesday, it just kind of felt weird. Just hop right back into football talk after the passing of Jalen Ferguson and Tony Saragusa. So I just kind of just took a day off just to, you know, just, just, to give it some, just to give it a break. I didn't feel like coming right back talking about football the next day. You know, it was just, it was, it was a lot happening on Wednesday. So Thursday, I just, I just took that off. All right. Uh, but today, I'm going to talk about the, the 10 most expensive signings that the Ravens have made since 2012, uh, pretty much since that Super Bowl, okay? And this is free agency signing. This is not like re-signing Joe Flacco, um, you know, Marlon Humphrey's contract, uh, extending Marlon Humphrey before, you know, he gets the test free agency. Nothing like that. This is talking about guys who were ran out of the deal with their previous team and were pure free agents, and the Ravens went and signed them, okay? All right, so let's get into it, right? Let's start from the bottom. So there's three guys tied for number 10. Um, three years, $15 million. So you'll see on the list I put above, it will have the length of the contract, how much the contract was worth, and the year that the contract was signed. Okay? Okay, so now, uh, Morgan Moses, Mark Ingram, Austin Howard, all three years, $15 million. Uh, Michael Crabtree, three years, $21 million. Tyus Bowser, four years, $22 million. Now, I know you're looking at his name on this list. But Ty Bowser did test free agency for a very, very short amount of time. He pretty much signed with the Ravens um, almost instantly at the test of free agency. So, so he's an interesting case, but he does count on this list as a free agent. Uh, Kevin Zeitler, three years, twenty-two and a half a million. Brandon Carr, four years, twenty-three and a half million. Eric Waddle, four years, twenty-six million. Uh, Tony Jefferson, four years, thirty-four million. Eugene Monroe, five years, thirty-seven and a half million. Earl Thomas, four years, $55 million. Marcus Williams, five years, $70 million, just signed this past offseason. Okay, so what do I get when I look at this list? All right, I get defense at first off, off bat. Four safeties, one corner, one outside linebacker. All right, um, now we go back even more, right? Like I said, we get four safeties on this list. Ever since the Ravens had lost Ed Reed, um, you know, to, I guess, I don't know, a sour end, you know, him playing for the tight, uh, not Titans, sorry, the Texans and the Jets, you know, which we never wanted to see as Ravens fans, but it ended up happening. Um, Ravens have always been looking to replace safeties, uh, replace that kind of safety play. Now, obviously, Tony Jefferson's an outlier when it comes to that because he's not that kind of safety, he's an in the box kind of guy, but Marcus Williams, Earl Thomas, Eric Waddle were all guys that have played that kind of middle third, get interceptions all over the field kind of safety kind of guys, right? So the Ravens obviously value safety highly. Um, and that shows. Like the Ravens have always been a team that wanted good play on the back end. Okay. Secondly, uh, four offensive linemen. The Ravens have always been a team that wanted to run the ball. So signing offensive linemen for agency to whether it is to, you know, help the run blocking game or even protect the quarterback is something that the Ravens have been willing to do. Okay. Now the thing that stands out the most to me, obviously, on this list. As a Ravens fan, we know our struggles with offense. Two skill position players on offense. Okay. One wide receiver, Michael Crabtree, one running back in Mark Ingram. Now, this is where I'm saying the philosophy may need to change because you have to be willing to attract guys to play here. You can't just say we're going to draft everything and that's how we're going to go. Okay. Now, second part, I want to look at how long do these guys play out in the actual contracts. Okay. Start from the top. Marcus Williams is in year one, okay? Earl Thomas played one season here. Now, we know what happened with Earl Thomas. Punched Chuck Clark into practice. Um, had an offseason trouble with him and his brother. Um, that got his wife involved. And now he's in his own, you know, he's in another legal battle. So, Earl Thomas had a very tumultuous time with the Ravens. Only played one season. Eugene Monroe played two seasons here, okay? He... Um, <laughs> There's an awful ESPN that said that he's the worst contract in Ravens history. Now, that's up for debate, but obviously the deal didn't go as planned. You know, you signed Michael five years, $37.5 million. You wanted him to be a cornerstone. Uh, Eugene Monroe was not that. Okay. Tony Jefferson played out his deal pretty much. Now, there's been a lot of, you know, criticism of Tony Jefferson back and forth, even from myself. But he was a decent Raven the first time around. Now, 
Does he still lack cover skills and things like that? Of course, but I think he was playing too big of a role when he first got here. But now when he's back on the team now, I feel like this role is better suited for him. You know, he won't be on the field as much. He'll be on the field to pretty much run support and things like that. Okay, so I think that's uh, better suited for his skill set now. Eric Weddle played three seasons here. I have really fond memories of Eric Weddle, so good deal. Brandon Carr played three seasons here. I had fond memories of Brandon Carr, too. Now, was he the best corner in the world? No, but he was solid, and he played pretty much every game. Consistency is key, especially when, you know, you had somebody like, even though we love Jimmy Smith, we couldn't count on Jimmy Smith to play every game. We just couldn't. Okay? Um, the next two, Kevin Zeitler and Tyus Bowers, are both in year two of their deals, so um, can't, no, can't talk about them. Um, Michael Crabtree played one season. All right? Um... He played one season here. Uh, yeah, it was Lamar Jackson's rookie season. And once the offense kind of shifted, he kind of saw his way out. And that was it. I believe he played for the Cardinals next. And then that might have been it for Michael Crabtree's career. Okay. So it didn't, didn't work out at receiver right there. It didn't work out. Austin Howard, three-year deal, played one season. Mark Ingram played two seasons. Now, obviously, we have relief on memories of Mark Ingram, 2019 and 2020. 2019 was way better. You know, obviously, the 14 and two year. Um, 2019 is always going to be talked about as a great Ravens season, even at, you know, even how it ended. Um, and then Morgan Moses in year one of his current deal right now. Okay. Now I would say that out of this list, right? How many guys can you say that's a hit? So we're going to say Marcus Williams, Kevin Zeitler, uh, Tyus Bowser, Morgan Moses. We can't talk about. So take those four guys out. All right. Um, I would say that. Um, I would say Tony Jefferson's deal was a hit. So that's one. Eric Weddle, two. Brandon Carr, three. And Mark Ingram, four. Okay. So the Ravens have kind of been hit or missing for you. It's kind of 50 50 almost. All right. So, but my biggest thing is what does this mean for their philosophy going forward? I think the Ravens need to be more aggressive in free agency, attacking the offensive side of the ball. And we're not just talking about offensive linemen. I'm talking about actually skill business players. Now, this is not a rant to go on about, oh, do I like our wide receivers and things like that. This is not that kind of video, okay? I like the young guys. I think the young guys should get a chance to play. I have no problem with that. Do I think the Ravens should still sign a veteran because the Ravens need more bodies in the room? Yes. So, this is not that kind of video. This is, about a, this is a video about the Ravens' philosophy going forward. I think that the Ravens need to be more aggressive in free agency. And point being is because you can't depend on the draft for everything. Especially when you're a good team. When you're a good team, obviously you're going to be drafting to the back end of the round, later picks. You're going to have to do more maneuvering to move up in the draft if you want to do that kind of move. To get advanced as a as a team that's already established is you have to be willing to pay some money in free agency. Now, I think it's about a team like the Rams. Now, the Rams, it wasn't actually free agency, but it's about aggressive movement, you know. Signing Odell, getting uh, Von Miller, excuse me, doing things that they knew was necessary to take their team over the top. The Ravens, they kind of do it. They say they say we're gonna do it the Ravens way, and we play it safe. And I think it's because they got burned in free agency a little bit. Like you know, you see a guy like a Eugene Monroe, you give him a big money deal, and it didn't really work out like that. You see a guy like Earl Thomas, you give him a big money deal, it didn't really work out like that. Um, so they, you know, they they, they kind of play a reserve. Especially on offense. Especially on offense. Now, on defense, they'll get, like I said, they'll get burned by old Thomas, but then they'll go sign Marcus Williams. It won't it won't miss a beat. Now, I look at Crabtree. Crabtree was signed in 2018. All right? And I'm not saying for the Ravens to go out here and spend money like a like, like the Jags did on Christian Kirk on receiver. That's undeserving. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is this, okay? For Michael Crabtree to be the last receiver... Um, on this list, and I know they were signed many receivers before, they must all been fat minimum guys, guys who have made an impact. The Ravens need to sign guys that's going to make an impact in the skill position area. That's the main focus. That's my main thing. They signed Mark Ingram. He had a great year. They spent the money on a running back, like like significant money, $15 million for Mark Ingram at a time. That was a investment in Mark Ingram. And it paid off. So why not do that same thing at wide receiver? I get it. This they, they they drafted the receiver they have now. That's great. I hope those guys ball out. This is more about will the Ravens ever really 
change their philosophy and actually expand, right? You can only do the same thing for so long, right? And, and expect different results. I, the Ravens will spend all their money on defense. And we've seen them do it. But when it comes to skill position on offense, they, they penny pinch. They, they don't want to do this and that. The Ravens have to be willing to make a big move, whether it's trade, free agency. They have to be willing to make a big move to really push this team over top of the Super Bowl. The Ravens are in their Super Bowl window right now. They have a quarterback that's a generative talent right now. And you need to have the guys around him to help him push to that next level. So that's the main thing about this video is asking the Ravens to um, expand a little bit. Okay. Be okay with taking that risk. And that's, that's pretty much the main goal of this video. Okay. Because free agency is going to be hit or miss. You can't let the fact that you were burned in free agency by one or two players stop you all together. You don't let it happen on defense. Why do you let it happen on offense? So that's the main point of this video. So that's just something to think about. And um, so, yeah, man, I want to drop this video. And I'm going to end it by still saying RIP to uh, Jalen Ferguson. RIP to Tony Saragusa, man. It's uh, Gabriel. This is Fan TV. I'm out.